glorify his name on this beautiful Sunday, 22nd Sunday after Pentecost, here at the Presbyterian Church of Teaneck, joined by friends and family around the globe. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approach. Let us be called to worship. Happy are those who do not take the path that sinners tread. May we be like trees planted by streams of God's living water. Let us worship God. Please join me in unison with our prayer of praise and adoration. God of history, you know our story better than we know ourselves. You are the Alpha and the Omega, with us from the beginning, with us until the end. Your steadfast love is our ever-present help and hope. We praise you for your faithfulness. Despite our wanderings and failures, you have not abandoned us. We are your people. You are our God. Hear our prayers of gratitude, praise, and adoration. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ of the Upward Way, number 344, and it's printed in, in your bullet. Let us 
join in our prayer of confession. Eternal God, your law commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Too often we prioritize our own interests above the health and welfare of others. We betray you and our best selves by living without regard for the ways our actions harm our neighbors in need and the planet entrusted to our care. Open our hearts to love. Encourage us to open our minds to honestly acknowledge our role in wrongdoing. Forgive us and return us to your way of righteousness. Assurance of pardon. Hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Glory be to the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. But a few announcements today. Some are written in your parish press. This week, calendar of events, November 8th, 7.30. Worship and Music Committee will have its meeting Wednesday. Following Tuesday, November 14th, 7.30 p.m., we have the deacons meeting. And then that next day, November 15th, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Uh, session meeting. Uh, we do note that our sister church over at First Baptist in Teaneck will be hosting on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, free tutoring program. So those who have children who have students, take them on down to uh, 1599, I think, 1592, I've tutored my eyes a little bit, uh, <laughs> down on Teaneck Road, right across from Bryant, uh, here in Teaneck, they'll have math, study skills, essay writing, homework help, test prep, reading, science, and more. Always a good time to sharpen your skill. Are we welcome Elder Robert Mason? It's always a pleasure. Look forward to the message. Let us prepare for our scripture. taken from Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 4, and then 12 through 28, and then the New Testament, Romans 15, verses 4 through 5. Jacob dwelt in the land of his father's sojourning, in the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a lad with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wife. 
And Joseph brought an ill report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him, could not speak peaceably to him. Moving down to verse 12. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to them, said to them, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a man found him wandering in the fields, and the man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, I pray you, where they are pasturing the flock. And the man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. <coughs> they said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dream. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, cast him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand upon him, that he might rescue him out of their hands to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and cast him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. When Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelite, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh, and his brothers heeded him. Then Midianite traders passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver, and they took Joseph. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament lesson, Genesis 37, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 28. Our New Testament lesson, taken from Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 5. For whatever was written in former days, was written for our instruction, that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ. Here in the New Testament lesson. Romans 15, verses 4 through 5. My God, my Savior has 
ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but god who called me here below will be forever mine my chains are gone Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a Unending love, amazing Good morning. Good morning. So good to be here again uh, today. And also just want to say to Heather and Jeremy, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, for the beautiful music. And Jeremy, I, at, at some point in the song, I said, that's a little Luther in there too. <laughs> a little Luther Vandross there. I, I saw that. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for your wisdom as we delve into your word today. Open our hearts to understand your power, even in times of difficulty. Help us to grasp the depth of Joseph's faith and remind us that even when you seem silent, you are never absent. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. A few weeks ago, I gave the sermon at my church in Jersey City. However, that day, I had an underlying sadness, and I could not explain it, but there was sadness. My sermon that day was, they'll know we're Christians by our love, and it happens to be one of my favorite messages asking us to follow Jesus' words and love one another. I did not truly understand why I felt so much sadness until the next day when I, as usual, got up and turned on the news. And the wave of sadness came over me again and I realized my sadness was because of my view of the world today. So much sadness. We are living through two wars that we are now seeing live on TV. We are seeing those who have been taken hostage, and we know that there are people who have been killed. We see bombs bursting in air and destroying buildings. We hear of the atrocities, and it doesn't take much of an imagination to see that in your mind's eye. Back here in the United States, a six-year-old boy a six-year-old boy 
was stabbed 26 times because he was Muslim and considered a threat. Lord, where are you? But something said to me that day to be encouraged. Encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to let go of the picture you thought that and want life to be and learn to find joy in the story you're actually going through. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. These are the wonderful words of a song with the same title, Encourage Yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. No matter how you feel, speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. This song reminded me that I needed help. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that, in, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We don't have to look far to find someone who will tell us how bad the world is and why our future looks bleak. But where do you turn when you need to feel good about yourself, about the world around you, and about the future, what the future holds? God's word, of course. I've read the Bible a number of times, and, on, and I am on my third round for a podcast called The Bible in a Year. And one of my favorite stories is of Jacob. Sorry favorite stories is of Joseph, who was the youngest and favorite son of Jacob and great-grandson of Abraham. It's a story about handling the troubles in your life. It's about being encouraged. It's packed with lessons on God's presence in difficult times and Joseph's unwavering faith in God's plan. It's an example and the truth that God's silence doesn't mean his absence. I don't know about you, but I'm in need of encouragement these days. I'm in need of God's word every day. I'm in need of hearing the good word. There's a line from the song, Encourage Yourself, that says, as I administer to you, I administer to myself. I'm looking for God and encouragement every day. I'd like to share a wonderful quote. It says, faith means believing in advance what, you will, on what will only make sense in reverse. <clears throat> faith means believing in advance what will only make sense in reverse. It's a thought-provoking reminder that our understanding often lags behind God's plan. But faith encourages <clears throat> us to trust him regardless. The power of God is the central aspect of our Christian faith. It is the belief that God is in control of all things, not just some things, and that his will ultimately is going to be accomplished. This belief is not only comforting, but it is also challenging, especially when we face difficult times, like the times we're going through right now. The story of Joseph is a prime example of God's presence in difficult times. Despite the many trials and tribulations Joseph <coughs> faced, God's plan for his life was fulfilled, and through him, many lives were saved. Joseph's story begins with him being favored by his father, which stirs up jealousy and hatred among his brothers. <coughs> Joseph was the youngest. Joseph was the youngest. And if you had siblings, Joseph was that brother or sister who got on your nerves. If you're not familiar with that brother or sister who actually got on your nerves as you were growing up, unless you were the only child, then you may have been that sibling that got on your brother's and sister's nerve. Regrettably, Joseph, for jo regrettably for Joseph, this leads to a series of unfortunate events where Joseph is sold into slavery by his own brothers. 
This could have been the end of Joseph's story, a tragic tale of betrayal and loss, but it wasn't. Why? Because God was in control even in those difficult times. Joseph was not spared from the hardship. He was sold into slavery, falsely accused, and imprisoned. Yet God's power was at work. God was using these trials to shape Joseph, to prepare him for the role he was to play in the salvation of his family and many others. This is a powerful reminder for us. When we face difficulties, as we are all going through the, with the problems of the world today, it's easy to question God's presence in our lives. It's easy to wonder where God is in all this mess. We wonder why God will allow such things to happen. But the story of Joseph reminds us that God's plans are not always immediately clear to us. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Even in the midst of our trials, God is at work. He is shaping us, refining us, preparing us for the plans he has for us. Remember that quote, faith means believing in advance what will only be make sense in reverse? We are also reminded here that God's presence does not mean that, he will, that we will not face difficulties, but his power does mean that he will bring good out of the worst situations. Joseph's, bro Joseph's brothers intended to harm him, but God intended it for good. God was able to use the evil action of Joseph's brothers to bring about his plan for Joseph's life and the lives of many others. Now, this doesn't excuse the action of Joseph's brothers, but it does demonstrate the incredible power of God. No matter what happens, God is able to use it for his purposes. We can encourage ourselves to remember that in the midst of our trials, it can be difficult to see how God is working. We may feel like Joseph, alone and forgotten, but just as God was with Joseph, he is with us. He is working in our lives, even when we can't see it. His power assures us that our trials are not in vain. I'd like to share a bit of my story similar to that of Joseph. I was working for a company where I was employed as director of training. Friday, December 1st, 2000, was the day of my father's funeral. At my father's wake, my boss came at the time and expressed his sympathy and went back to his office and sent out an email to the organization that I was no longer in the position of director of training and was being assigned to a new position and a newly created department. The important thing about that was that I knew nothing about it. However, I found out when I showed up for work on Monday morning. My staff was surprised and saddened as I was. I had no idea what this meant for my career journey and where it would lead me. Now, there's a backstory to this. And the backstory is that the consultant that was hired by the bank and I did not see eye to eye on a project. And she believed that someone younger, someone younger, would be able to see her vision better. At the time it happened, I did not and could not have seen what was ahead for me, but like Joseph, was not aware of the plan that God had for me. We can encourage ourselves as we delve more into the story of Joseph. One of the most striking aspects of is his unwavering faith in God's plan. Despite the trials and tribulations he faced, Joseph remained steadfast in his belief that God was in control and had a purpose for his life. Joseph's faith is first tested when his brothers, envious of their father's favoritism towards him and resentful of his dreams that suggested that he would one day rule over them, plotted to kill him. Instead, they sold him into slavery, a fate that could have easily led Joseph to despair and question God's plan. However, Joseph's faith remained unshaken. He trusted that God was with him in the midst of his suffering, 
as we follow Joseph's journey into Egypt, we see his faith continue to shine. Despite being falsely accused and imprisoned, Joseph never wavers in his trust in God. He interprets his dreams with the confidence that God is speaking through him. And even in prison, he finds favor with the jailer. Joseph's faith is not a passive acceptance of circumstances, but an active trust in God's plan, even when the plan is not immediately clear. Like Joseph, I stayed my course also. And whatever God's plan was, I decided to use the opportunity to create things for the better. First of all, I had terrible bosses. Terrible. <laughs> but, but sometimes the best experience is having a terrible manager and realizing that they're terrible. You can learn what not to do. Along the way, I found other opportunities to enhance my experience. At the time I took over this new department, they gave me authority over the tuition reimbursement program. Not even a minor success, with only five people taking a part of it in the organization. <clears throat> Most of the employees in the organization could not afford to put money out for tuition and wait for somebody to reimburse them. They had to pay rent. They had to buy food. And trust me, the pay they were getting for the work was not enough to do that and put money out for tuition. I recommended and got approved a program of tuition disbursement. We would give the employees the tuition payments up front, and all they had to do to keep, was to keep up the A's and B's, and they would not have to pay any of the money back. I can tell you that many people went through the program and got their associate's and bachelor's degree, which led to better opportunities and promotions. At one point, there were up to 30 people in the program, certainly helping more than the five we started out with. This new position also allowed me the opportunity to get involved in the employee relations aspect of the company, dealing with all disciplinary problems and other problems that came up. I was com also completing coursework, coursework, leading to a doctorate in organizational psychology and gathering the, inf the education and experience in many things that I would need, doing what I could. But I still did not know where God was leading me. I just followed his lead. We can be encouraged as Joseph's faith was ultimately rewarded when he was released from prison and elevated to a position of power in Egypt. He is able to save his family from famine, and in doing so, he realizes the purpose behind his suffering. Joseph's story is a powerful statement to the idea that God can bring out even good in even the most dire circumstances. As for me, my ultimate reward came after gathering experience over, the, over six years that I headed up that new department. I took the opportunity to gather the experience, gather the good, get rid of the bad of management, and was ultimately rewarded with not just the person just doing employee relations, but I became the director of employee relations, responsible for making sure the employees were treated fairly, for making sure the experience of working at the organization was a good one. And if it wasn't, it was my responsibility to make sure that whatever problem there was, was resolved in a favorable manner. The responsibility of the of final term employee termination decisions at the, at the organization was in the hands of two people. I had two of those hands. It was a long way from the discouragement I felt that Monday morning after my father's funeral, finding that I had lost that training position. Joseph was moved by God's grace and power from the prison to the palace. And looking back on it, so was I. Oh, isn't it the way that with you and me, that so many times when we hold fast to God's promises and wait patiently for him, he does things in our lives beyond what we could have expected. 
And oh, by the way, that project that I was taken off of six years prior to this, where a younger person was supposed to be the answer for getting it off, off in, in the right direction, was never completed. And thousands of dollars were wasted on the project and the consultant. A noted theologian John Piper once said, God is always doing 10,000 things in your life, and you may be aware of three of them. This quote perfectly captures the story of Joseph and our story each day. Throughout his trials, Joseph was likely only aware of a fraction of what God was doing in his life. Joseph did not know where God was leading him through all the chaos and everything else that was going on around him. He did not know. I did not know where God was leading me. I was floundering around in a new area, not knowing what to do. I did not know where God was leading me. Today, with all the chaos in this world, we do not know where God is leading us. We do not know his plans, but we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, and he has never failed us yet. Encourage yourself in the Lord and encourage yourself in his word. Use your Bible and encourage yourself knowing that you're not alone in a given situation. The very same pages that encourages us to rejoice always gives us hundreds of compelling reasons to do so. Here's a sampling of the encouragement and insp inspiration you'll find in the pages of scripture. Encourage yourself in Jeremiah 29, 11 to 12. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Be encouraged by Joshua 1, 8 to 9. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate, it on, meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go joyfully exclaim that I am encouraged by Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In the end, Joseph's faith was not in vain. His story is a testament to the power of faith and the power of God. It is a reminder that no matter what we face, we can trust in God's plan. And remember, God's silence does not mean his absence. If we are asking where God is today, it is often during those silent periods that God is doing some of his deepest work in our lives. He is present in our pain, in our confusion, and our waiting. His silence is not a sign of his absence, but rather a call to trust him more deeply. He uses these times to shape our character, strengthen our faith, and prepare us for the plans he has for us. In Joseph's case, his time in the pit and his experience as a slave in Egypt were not wasted. They were part of God's plan to position him in a place of influence where he could save many lives, including the lives of his very brothers who had betrayed him. In my case, my years of floundering helped me gain various insights and experience to be able to head up one of the most important roles in human resources. In our lives, we, have to, we may face situations where God seems silent. We may pray and seek his guidance, yet feel as if our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. In these times of war and hate and uncertainty, let's remember the story of Joseph. Let's remember that God's silence does not mean his absence. He is still with us, still working, still shaping us into the people he wants us to be. We learned of another mass shooting this week. 
People with pros and cons about war are fighting each other. But we need to speak over ourselves. The Bible tells us that speaking God's word over ourselves is speaking life and health. God's word is a wide-ranging antibiotic. Be encouraged by the story of Joseph, who found even in the darkest of times that God was still there with him, guiding him and protecting him. Let us learn as we go through our own dark times that leaning on and trusting in the Lord, we too will make it through. Remember that faith means believing in advance what will only make sense in reverse. Let's believe in advance, trusting that God is working all things for our good, even when we can't see it. Encourage yourself in the Lord today. Amen. God loves us and blesses us with abundance. God also encourages us to love others and be generous with all we have been given. In gratitude to God, let us present our tithe and offering. <laughs> God, these offerings are only a portion of all that you have given us. We gratefully entrust these gifts to your care and Christ's ministry. May these gifts reflect our love for our neighbors in need. 
bless another as we have blessed, we have been blessed. Amen. Amen. point in our service where we can share our joys and concerns. We note those on our continued prayer list. Mary Coleman, Mary Bennett, Aria Cho, Wayne Cho, Carmen Henry, Gloria Jenkins, Carl and Sylvia Johnson. Audrey Joseph, Sandra Joseph, Yvonne Joseph, Jean Kinlock, Edgar Miller, Henry Robinson, Daniel Santiago, Charles Warren. As for prayers for those who are dealing with crises and turmoil in their lives, <coughs> those who are facing the uncertainty of war, and violence. Ask that you pray for. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us through this past week. We thank you for watching over us and blessing us with your love, grace, and mercy every day. Heavenly Father, we come to you in search of peace. Our minds can become burdened by difficult relationships and conflict, but we know that you live in our hearts and you alone can give us the hope and courage to continue on. We look to you today to be our patience and strength as we walk through these challenging times. We seek comfort in your grace in the darkest moments. We trust you to inspire us toward love and forgiveness always, for you alone are our source of inner peace and joy for every season, no matter how difficult life becomes. We know that you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but sometimes we are overcome with fear and anxiety and find ourselves paralyzed and unable to move forward. But you, God, are our strength to endure despite our fears through your permanent and powerful present within us. You supply the love and self-control we need to face every difficulty, and we look to you today to lead us. Dear Lord, we pray for this world in the midst of two wars. We pray for those who are directly affected and their families. We pray for peace and love and understanding wherever there is discord. Lord, like Joseph, we pray that we will wait patiently for you in all our circumstances knowing that sometimes you're not trying to change our circumstances, but changing us. Thank you for your, in your own time and your own way, fulfilling your purpose and plan for our lives, knowing that in your timing, in your perfect plan, your story and our lives will be fulfilled. Lord, we pray for this church and its members this morning. We pray that whatever may be going on in their lives, that you will guide them through it. Bless each one of them, Lord, with your love and everything they need. We pray for the sick and shut-ins of this church. We, may they receive your healing powers each day. We pray for those who are bereaved, that they may be comforted. We pray for those who have asked for prayers, that they may be answered by you. And dear Lord, we thank you for your word and lessons that we've learned today. Help us to trust in your plan even when we can't see it. Give us a faith like Joseph's, unwavering and steadfast. We ask for your guidance and protection as we go into this new week. We ask these and all things in the name of him who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever. Amen. Closing hymn is for the beauty of the earth, number 473. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit this day and always 
we pray. Amen. Amen.
give me. Uh, well, let's have a moment of fellowship online. If you can unmute your, unmute your, your volume. 